The most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> Happy holidays, plan friends. I believe this episode is releasing on Thanksgiving week for the States. It's the holiday season officially. And with the holiday season means gifts. I don't know about you, but gifts are not my love language and they stress me out. Gift shopping for my friends and family is super stressful for me. <laughs> And I was thinking about gifting and I thought, what better way to spread cheer and also to spread my planty passion than by gifting beloved friends and family and teachers and all the special people in my life that need gifts with a plant-inspired gift that you can make at home that is not going to cost you an arm and a leg, right? Affordable, cute, DIY planty gifts that the recipient will actually like and display in their home. And because it keeps growing, It's the gift that keeps on giving. So don't worry, today's episode, we've got a craft for everyone, whether you are a whiz with a glue gun or whether you can barely tie your shoelaces. I have some sort of crafty planty project that you can do to gift to the ones you love. From personalized terrariums to aesthetic kokodama to even a little thrifty nifty idea. I can't wait to tell you. These gifts are bound to leave the recipients in awe and delight. So welcome. Welcome to the Growing Joy podcast, where we not only learn how to care for plants successfully, but how to simply and affordably use our plant babies to cultivate more joy in our lives. I'm Maria, author of Growing Joy, The Plant Lover's Guide to Cultivating Happiness, speaker, podcaster, and most importantly, an epic plant killer turned happy plant lady. On Growing Joy, you'll find conversations about plant care, plant community, and wellness through the lens of plants. Plant care is self-care on Growing Joy, the podcast. Hello, plant friends. Welcome. Welcome to Growing Joy. If you're new here, I'm so happy you pressed play. Welcome. I'm your host, Maria, an epic plant killer turned crazy plant lady on a mission to help everyone grow joy with plants. And if you're a repeat listener, welcome back. I freaking love you. I think about you all the time. I'm so honored that you choose to spend your time with me on a weekly basis. I'm so excited about today's episode. It's a crafty episode. It's a solo episode. It's just me, but I've been thinking about gift giving as we enter the holiday season, and I thought it would be fun to put together several different planty gift ideas that you could do at your home that are affordable. A lot of these you could do with most of the stuff that you probably already have in your just little houseplant corner of your house, or you can thrift almost everything that we talk about today, with the exception, obviously, of plants and potting mix. Well, maybe you can thrift potting mix. I don't know. You know, as we enter this holiday season, I know it can be so stressful. There's so much going on. You're wrapping up the year. You got to get gifts. You got to go to a billion parties. But this episode, I hope that I can simplify gift giving for you. And I hope that I can actually make gift giving fun for you because basically you get to play with plants. All of these projects, you get to play with plants. So you get to enjoy it. You get to get your hands dirty. And then you get to share your joy of plants with the ones you love for the holidays. So here's how this is going to go. We've got five projects that I'm going to walk you through in today's episode. I'm going to walk you through what I can do in a podcast, right? This isn't a video podcast. So I'm going to walk you through the high-level steps of how you would go through making each of these projects. We'll have supplemental photos and maybe even some videos and even links to other blogs that I used as research in the show notes and the blog associated with this episode. So when it comes time for you to do one of these projects, definitely re-listen to the podcast, re-listen to the section that you're going to do so I can kind of walk you through it again, but also use all of the amazing resources that we have in the show notes for you to make this easy. So we're going from easiest to hardest in terms of craftiness, because I know that some people love a craft and some people are triggered by crafts. So we're starting with thrifted propagation gifts. Anyone can do this. We are then going to graduate into a mini herb garden, another very simple, very affordable project. Then we're going to move into some kind of 2.0 crafty projects, okay? We're going to go into the stylish kokodama. We're going to go into how to make a moth, how to make a succulent wreath. And then we're going to wrap it all up with a thrifted, personalized terrarium inspired by the person that you're gifting it to. So buckle up. I'm throwing a lot of ideas at you today. So let's dive right in. 
So number one, this is for the person who loves plants, but doesn't love crafting, (laughs) but wants an affordable gift that they can give to a friend that also is tied into plantiness. It's very simple. It's a thrifted propagation station. So this year I have become such a little nifty thrifty gal. I love thrifting, especially going to the Salvation Army or the local thrift stores. And at every single thrift store I go to, every single antique store I go to, there are tons of small, adorable glass vases and glass bottles that you can upcycle into a propagation station for your friend. You can even buy propagation stations. Like I have a gorgeous propagation station that I actually registered for my wedding. It has glass kind of test tubes and it's in this kind of beautiful brass holder. There's tons of varieties and tons of price points for what type of glass propagation vessel that you give. But the idea of this is you thrift a couple of glass bottles. They're usually literally a dollar at the thrift store, okay? Or gorgeous glass vases. I thrifted this beautiful ceramic gold rimmed vase for $5. This was $5. And then what you do is you take cuttings of your own plants, that's free, and pop them in these beautiful vases. You can do one or you could do a collection. You could wrap three different glass bottles with ribbon and gift a propagation station. You could even call it a houseplant nursery, right? So get a bunch of really cute glass bottles and vases, different heights, maybe wrap them in a little ribbon, or you could even put them inside of a big box, stick cuttings of all of your different houseplants in each one, And then you're basically gifting a friend a houseplant collection, right? It's a houseplant nursery. They're baby cuttings of the plants. But if your friend knows how to nurture those plants, they can turn those cuttings into full-size plants. And you can even maybe go online to like canva.com. That's a free website that allows you to do free designs. You could design a beautiful plant care card for all of the different cuttings that you're giving so that you're giving the gift of plants, but you're also giving the gift of knowledge. Maybe you even say, P.S., listen to Growing Joy with Plants podcast if you need to know how to take care of these cuttings. (laughs) But I really feel like that gift is going to run you maybe $10, right? If you buy a few glass bottles at the thrift store and then take cuttings of your own plants. Now, you can escalate this, right? If you want to spend more, you could go buy four-inch pots, four-inch houseplants at the garden center, and then you could go thrift really cool old ceramic bowls or pots or all sorts of amazing vessels. I mean, thrift stores are filled with amazing vessels that are waiting to be pots, right? All you have to do is drill holes in the bottom of the ceramic vessels. Make sure that you watch a tutorial on YouTube how to do that correctly. Or you could put a bunch of Lekka balls or lava rocks at the bottom of the vessel and pot it up. And you can actually give a potted plant in a thrifted vessel, but it's so personalized. It's so fun. And since it's upcycled, it's one of a kind. No one else is getting the gift that you're going to give the recipient, right? And who doesn't want to get plants? So moving from the thrifted propagation station, staying in line with potted plants, I want to move on to a DIY windowsill herb garden. If you take this to a like white elephant, this is going to be stolen over and over again, right? It's so simple. It's so affordable and it's so fun. Here's how you do it. You go to your garden center and you get small plugs of basil, chives, oregano, rosemary, whatever your favorite culinary herbs are. And then you're either going to do one epic pot of herbs, or you can do four inch terracotta pots of individual herbs. Sometimes you can buy those really pretty pot sets. It's like three pots that come on one tray. That would be beautiful for this. And then all you do is plant up your little herbs in these pots and you put a cute little bow on them, right? So that's the windowsill herb garden. But where this gets adorable is that you can either hand make or you can go on a canva.com and make your own herb care guide, or you can send them the herb episode of this podcast to make sure that they understand how to care for the herbs. And then here's where it gets personalized. This is where you make recipe cards for whatever herbs that you're gifting. So if I was gifting basil, I would write my mom's bruschetta recipe on a recipe card and gift it with the basil because basil is a pillar of my mom's bruschetta. If I was gifting rosemary, maybe I would write my mom's rosemary bolognese sauce recipe and gift it with the rosemary. So it becomes this really beautiful, intentional, thoughtful gift that you've made yourself, that you haven't spent a lot of money on, that is so sweet. And it's the gift that keeps on giving because that rosemary ideally will keep growing. But let's be real. Even if you give a bunch of potted herbs to a friend and they put it on their 
kitchen counter and the herbs don't get enough light and they don't last because how many times have we all done that with herbs? It's still going to last longer than a grocery store herb box. They're still going to cook something delicious with those herbs. And then they have the pot that they could put a plant in, right? So I think that is an adorable gift that you can give. All right, two crafts down, three to go. Here is where we up-level our quote-unquote craftiness plant friends. So the herb garden, the thrifted propagation, those are pretty easy to throw together, pretty affordable, not too many moving pieces. So here's if your inner craftsperson, craftsman, wants to kind of take it to the next level. So something that I was surprised that I would like so much now that I've made multiple of them and I love is the Kokodama. If you don't know what Kokodama are, you probably have seen them either online or in shops by you, but they're plants that are wrapped in the moss balls around the root. So instead of the plant being potted in a pot, it's wrapped in this really beautiful kind of aesthetic moss ball. And it's this like very whimsical vibe. You can hang them from the ceiling. You can hang multiple from the ceiling. I just sit mine in normal saucers, but they're really beautiful. They're a really unique way to display houseplants. If you have a large collection, they look really nice amidst a bunch of pots. And it's just an added level of nature that you're bringing. And because it's wrapped in mud and sphagnum moss, it actually is great for the roots. So kokodama is a Japanese tradition. It goes back to, I believe, the 17th century. And I'm pretty sure it actually translates to moss ball in Japanese. And it emerged as a bonsai variant. And I love that this technique embodies principles of wabi-sabi, which is one of my favorite things to think about when I'm feeling flawed, which is this practice of finding the beauty in imperfection, finding the beauty in flaws. And I don't know, I just think they're beautiful. I've made several of them now. We have a tutorial coming to the YouTube channel next year. Be subscribed, stay tuned. But it's been really fun. And I think they're really beautiful. And I think they would make an amazingly unique and cool gift. They're also super easy to care for. So here's what you need in order to make a kokodama. I was shocked at how easy it is. So you obviously need a potted plant. I would start with a small one first. And you want a potted plant that can dry out. You want an epiphyte. So I would go with an ivy, a pothos, a philodendron. Don't put a moisture-loving plant like a fern or a calathea in kokodama if it's your first time because it's a different watering technique. So it's gonna take you a minute to nail it, especially if you're gifting it for the holidays. You're going to need a bagged soil mix, and then you're going to need a bagged bonsai soil mix or a bagged like orchid bark soil mix. And that's going to be the mix that you make to make this mud ball inside of the moss. And then you're going to need sheet moss or sphagnum moss that you wrap the kokodama in and string or fishing line to wrap the ball and have the moss stay together. Also having scissors and a bowl of water for soaking the moss is going to be super helpful as well. And it's really simple. So in a little bowl, you're going to make the mud, which is simply potting mix, the bonsai mix, and water. You're going to make it so it's sticky. And then you're going to make a mud ball with that stickier potting mix. Don't worry that it's wet. You're not going to drown the roots. It's going to dry out. Then you're going to cut that ball in half with your hands. And you're going to take the plant that you have, and you're going to massage the soil off of the roots. And you're going to put the roots in the middle of that moss ball. Don't worry if like you can't get all the potting media off but you're basically going to put those roots in the middle of your delicious mud ball. And it's so fun to play around with. This is like playing in the mud. It's the best feeling. You're going to rehydrate your sphagnum moss. So you're going to lay your sphagnum moss down on the table or on a dish that has some water so it's nice and damp if it's dried. And then you're literally just wrapping the ball in the sphagnum moss. And then you take your twine or your string and then you wrap it in circles over and over and over again in every single angle to basically attach the moss to the mud ball. The string slash twine is where you're going to also kind of shape the ball. And it's really wild when I was filming the YouTube video. I'm sorry we couldn't get it to air now. You'll have to wait an extra month for it to air. But It was funny, like the ball, it kind of looks like a total disaster until it doesn't. Like this is definitely a craft that you have to trust the process on. So hang in there as you're wrapping and wrapping and wrapping and wrapping and wrapping. Then you'll tie it off. And then I thought just like with the herb garden, you made a little recipe card. You could also make a cute little kokodama care card. And the way that you care for the kokodama, it's very simple. You're going to feel it heavy when the moss and the mud soil is saturated Once it starts to dry out, the ball is going to get very light. And that's when you literally just soak the ball in a bowl of water. So the way I do mine is I make a bowl of water and then I put the kokodama in the bowl of water. I leave it for an hour. The kokodama will suck all the water in and then it'll be heavy again. 
This is so fun to do with kids because they get to see kind of capillary action in motion, which I think is super fun. Holiday shopping is here, plant friends, and what better gift to give someone you love than a personalized Wind River wind chime? Plus, you don't need to leave the house while you shop. Wind River Chimes will deliver the most magical, most thoughtful, personalized gift straight to your door. When you use the code GROWINGJOY at checkout with them at windriverchimes.com, you can get a free engraving on any of the engravable wind chimes, so you can personalize it for your loved one with a special saying, a memorable date, or a name. For over 35 years, Wind River Chimes has been passionately pursuing harmony by delivering high-quality wind chimes that help create a peaceful, soothing, restful environment. We have two of them at our house. We are obsessed with them. Mama Fiella recently visited my house to take care of me after my surgery. She would not stop talking about the chime, and when she left, specifically requested one for Christmas for her house in Florida because she could not get over how amazing it sounded versus the other chimes that she already has. And hey, the holidays are stressful, and Wind River Chimes are really relaxing to listen to. So maybe you get one as a gift or maybe you just get one for yourself. A Wind River Chime is the perfect gift because every time the recipient hears the gorgeous chime singing in the wind, they're going to think of you and be gifted a moment of calm. Use the code GROWINGJOY at checkout at windriverchimes.com. Get a free engraving on any of the engravable chimes. That's windriverchimes.com and code GROWINGJOY at checkout for your free engraving. I'm going to be honest with you, plant friends. I have been very wary of working with a houseplant brand as a sponsor for the show because the show is all about houseplants and gardening. So I feel hesitant to work with brands because I don't want to steer you wrong, right? If I'm going to work with someone, I need to really believe in them. Well, I just got back from visiting the Proven Winners Leaf Joy Greenhouses and Plant Friends. They are doing such amazing work when it comes to houseplants. I am so excited to be working with Proven Winners Leaf Joy. They are not messing around when it comes to these houseplants that they are bringing to market. They are selecting only the best plant genetics and growing them in this very fancy state-of-the-art European greenhouse in Virginia. You can check out my Instagram to see my visit to the greenhouse. It's the Instagrams where I'm in the hot pink jumpsuit, but really, the greenhouse is heaven. It's filled with seas of monstera constellations, philodendrons, alocasia, pink plants, green plants, variegated plants. If you have a wishlist plant, I bet LeafJoy is currently growing it or planning on growing it because they just had every plant on my wishlist in the greenhouse. It was wild. And also, I love that Proven Winners LeafJoy also chooses to put the plant, the scientific plant names on the plant tags. So their plant tags have the plant names, care guides. And if you're someone who struggles with picking out the right plant for you, they've taken the guesswork out of it. They've got this color-coded collections system, which has different collections of their plants for different areas of your home. They have highlight plants in their atrium collection, low-light plants in their cocoon collection, space-saving plants in their work-life collection, and humidity-loving plants in their spa scene collection. They make it easy. So next time you're at your favorite garden center, look for the Proven Winners Leaf Joy plant tags. You are not going to be disappointed in the variety and the quality. I am still blown away. We are growing joy with Leaf Joy this year, plant friends. Head to provenwinners.com to find your local Leaf Joy dealer and let me know what plant you take home on your socials. So I just think a Kokodama plant would be such a sweet gift, but also make one for yourself, plant friends. I'm so surprised at how much I love the Kokodama. We've talked about it in a couple of other episodes lately. Now, in terms of holiday festivities, I mean, you don't get more festive than a wreath and you don't get more planty than a wreath made out of living succulents. (laughs) So why not put them all together and make a planty wreath that you can either display at your house or you can gift as a housewarming gift or a holiday party gift. You could bring them to your in-laws. You could bring them to your parents. There's so many different things you can do with the wreath. And the instructions that I'm about to walk you through, you could also do this with like cones. I've seen people make little succulent Christmas trees out of it, but you can basically like come up with whatever shape you want and do this technique. You can also make Christmas tree ornaments with this method. So if you want to gift a living ornament that can be displayed on your friend or family member's tree and then taken apart and planted, I mean, come on, that would be so fun. 
So I wanted to give a quick shout out to my friend Succulents and Sunshine. I'm actually walking you through a tutorial that she has with lots of photos on her website. We're going to link to this tutorial on her website because she is the succulent queen. So shout out. Love you, friend. Okay, but basically here's how you make these tutorials. Now, once again, easier than I thought. You basically need a sphagnum moss wreath form or wire and sphagnum moss to make your own wreath. You need greening pins, which I did not know what they were until I read this blog, but they're basically pins that are almost U-shaped that are going to allow you to affix the succulents to the moss. She recommends 200 succulent cuttings. So this is where this wreath might get a little bit expensive. This craft might be the most expensive of, of all the options, but you can also take cuttings of your own succulents if you have a large succulent collection and scissors. I'm also going to allow for, not allow, but I'm also going to say, you know, I've seen this craft done with hot glue. So you can hot glue a succulent leaf as long as the succulent has kind of scabbed and dried out. You can hot glue a succulent by its leaf onto the moss structure if you want as well. I've seen that done as well. So in terms of the sphagnum moss wreath frame, I was at Michael's the other day and I saw these sphagnum moss frames and they're pretty affordable. And I feel like for the hustle, the hassle that they're going to save you, they're probably a worthwhile investment. You can get them on Amazon. We'll link in the blog. But if you want to make your own, like say you want to make like a cool shape or you want to make something unique or you actually want to do, you know, the Christmas tree cone or a Christmas tree ornament, basically you need sphagnum moss to put the succulents in. So if you're going to do a Christmas tree ornament, I'd take a ball of of some sorts and I'd wrap sphagnum moss with fishing line, just like we did for the Kokodama. If you want a cone, you know, you could take a styrofoam cone or some sort of cone, wrap that in sphagnum moss, wrap that in twine. But I would just say, if you have the budget, buy it online, it's going to be a lot easier. And then you're just going to soak yours in the bathtub. So you want to make sure that when you're doing this craft, the moss is damp, that you're putting the succulents in. So then before you just like get after it and go into this wreath, I would say take your cuttings and make an outline of what you want to do. If you want to do a cool ombre effect, if you want to do groupings of different types of plants, you know, in different sections of the wreath, I would just kind of make a layout of what you want to do before you go in and start because once you start poking and prodding these plants, you're not going to want to be like moving them around too much. I also love the idea of having some string of pearls, string of dolphins, string of bananas, string of whatevers to kind of wrap in and out of all of the different succulents that you're putting in. I think that's really beautiful. Now you're going to take your scissors or you can also use a dowel if you have. I would literally use a terrarium tool that I've made is a wine cork and a fork that you stick a fork in. But you're basically going to poke holes throughout the moss wreath that you then are going to put the succulents in. It's very simple, right? So you poke holes in the wreath, you make a little nest, and then you put your succulents in. How dense you plant, how sparse you plant is totally up to you. The denser you plant, the easier the succulents are going to help stabilize each other. And then, so here's where nature needs to take its course. So if you can plant up this wreath and allow six weeks for the wreath to sit on your table, for the roots of the succulents to grow into the wreath, you can just let it lay flat. But realistically, if you're making this for the holidays, you probably don't have six weeks to just let it chill. So this is where you're going to get greening pins. They're like big U-shaped bobby pins. And basically the pin goes over the leaf and secures it into the moss wreath, right? So it's a way to secure the succulent to the wreath. And so when you put it up vertical up against a door, the succulents don't fall out. This is also where if you want to do hot glue, you can hot glue one of the leaves, the leaf will likely perish after, but the hot glue will keep the succulent attached to the wreath until roots can grow. But if you want this wreath to be an epic living wreath that you have year round, maybe something you make for your door or something you want to give as a housewarming gift instead of just like a holiday gift, you want to try and let, you know, if you want it to root the old fashioned way, you need to leave those cuttings six to eight weeks to lie flat so that they can root. But the grading pins is kind of like the workaround for that because ain't nobody got time for that. Then you can also go through with that fishing line and secure the succulents. But now you have your succulent wreath. You can spritz or water the moss every time it dries out so that it's nice and damp and supportive of the roots so the the plants can root into the wreath. But it's so beautiful. And I've seen them as epic as like a full wreath covered in hundreds and hundreds of cuttings or a simple wire circle where like the bottom fourth or the bottom sixth of the circle is wrapped in moss and done it. Like you can do a really dainty one with just a couple of succulents, 
or you could do a really epic one. And frankly, you could do them with succulents or you could do them with plant cuttings as well. So I'm curious to see what you guys do. Please, if you make a wreath, DM me, send me a picture of it. I will put it on my stories. But I think this would also be like the most amazing holiday gift, the gift that keeps on giving because then they can either leave it on their, you know, if they live in a in a climate that supports the succulents living outdoors, they can leave the wreath on their door or after the holidays, they can plant those succulents up because they're going to be rooted. How cool is that? Fall is here. Winter is coming, which always makes me want to do a little refresh, a little reset, get cozy, especially when it comes to my home, when it kind of feels like I'm prepping to hibernate up here in the woods of New York. Um, But cozy, luxe, home good items can be expensive. That's when I discovered that Quince, the company that I've been loving for their affordable and luxe clothing, also has well-priced home goods that elevate my home. So you've heard me talk about the gorgeous Mongolian cashmere sweater that I have been living in. It feels like I am wrapped in a cloud. But Quince also has the Mongolian cashmere throw blankets and pillow covers. Could you imagine a Mongolian cashmere throw blanket wrapped around you as you binge Gilmore Girls or whatever other show you watch in the winter? Plus, they have luxury quality home goods like their European linen and luxury organic sateen sheet sets. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. You heard me right, 50 to 80% less. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices along with premium fabrics and finishes. When I tell you I live in the biker shorts and cashmere sweater that I have from theirs, I mean, I, I wear them too often than I should admit. Give your home the refresh it deserves with Quince. Go to quince.com slash joy to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince spelled Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash joy for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash joy. I'm Dr. Laurie Santos, host of the Happiness Lab podcast. Making new friends and maintaining old friendships is a great way to boost your happiness. There are lots of sources of well-being standing around you. You just have to tap into them. But sadly, we don't always feel up for being sociable. If I was approaching a stranger, my heart would race. I'd feel like I was going to throw up. I just had so much anxiety around it. So in a new season of the show, I'll tackle how to make firm friendships firmer, right through to the joy you can find in talking to total strangers. I'm very much enjoying your animal print scarf, madam. You look wonderful. The steps to becoming more social might surprise you. But trust me, they're things you can introduce into your daily routine right away. I do your purple hair, madam. It pops. So listen to The Happiness Lab on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your shows. I feel like I am in a cloud right now, plant friends. Do you know why I feel like I'm in a cloud? It's because I am wrapped in the cozy embrace of a cashmere outfit from one of my new favorite clothing brands, Quince. I have been wanting to hit reset lately, plant friends, especially with my daily work from home attire. I went through my work from home in your pajamas era, and now I want to enter my work from home in your cute, cozy, comfortable outfits era. And this is when I found Quince because they are so fairly priced and the quality of their clothes and their home goods is insane. Like I said, I am wearing their Mongolian cashmere sweater right now and it feels like I am wrapped in the coziest cloud and they also make the row blankets with this Mongolian cashmere. Let me describe my outfit to you. I feel so comfortable and elegant at the same time. So I, like I said, I'm wearing one of their Mongolian cashmere sweaters. Plant friends, they're priced at $50. A cashmere sweater for $50. Oh my gosh, it is so comfortable. It is so breathable and it comes in so many colors. I'm wearing the burgundy one, but I also have my eye on their spicy mustard one and their Everglade green one because obviously I need to match my plants. I'm also rocking their ultra soft bike shorts. And let me tell you something about these shorts. They feel like butter. All Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. 
By partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes the saving on to us. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes. So give your closet and your home the refresh it deserves with Quince. Go to quince.com slash joy to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E, dot com slash joy for free shipping and 365 day returns quince.com slash joy okay last but not least we have arrived at my most favorite craft ever i recently did three more of these the other day as gifts for friends a thrifted terrarium so i'm a thrifty girl plant friends i've talked about this i think holiday gifts don't need to be crazy expensive When you go to the thrift store, you will find so many amazing terrarium options. You can make entire worlds in terrariums that are meaningful and cute for people that you love. For an example, my sister-in-law is a teacher for young kids. So I recently thrifted a terrarium, a closed terrarium vessel. It's like an old glass cookie jar and she loves gnomes. And so I made her a gnome enchanted forest in this terrarium. It looks so amazing. And I gifted it to her to bring to her students and have in her classroom, right? For my husband, I found a plastic version of our bird, Frankie, and I made him a terrarium, a Frankie terrarium of, you know, Frankie surrounded by a bunch of silly little parrots. You could take a terrarium and not put anything in it, right? You can just make it beautiful and planty. Like I found this small closed terrarium in the glass shape of a heart. And I want to fill it with pink nerve plants to make this big, luscious pink heart and then give it to Billy to have on his desk. But where it gets fun with terrariums is you can go online or to your local like Michael's or craft store and find so many like little whimsical fairy figurines or knights and fairies. And, you know, you can get like a whole kitchen. You can get all sorts of like little I don't know. You guys know what I'm talking about. They're like little figurines. And basically, whoever you're gifting, like whatever their favorite thing is, like say they love tacos, you could make them a freaking taco terrarium. Say they have a dog that they really love. You could find a little figurine of their dog or the type of dog that they have and then make them that. Like the ability to make a terrarium hyper personal to whoever you're gifting is so incredible. And I just think everyone should do this. So anyway, You can go to your local thrift shop and pick up a terrarium vessel. You can pretty much make anything a terrarium, but I recommend a closed terrarium is one that you're really not going to have to water, or an open terrarium is one that kind of bows out and then closes in at the top, and then there's a little hole at the top. You want the hole at the top to be wide enough for you to actually get in there and plant it up. So for a terrarium, you're going to need horticultural charcoal. I like lecca balls, but you need some form of drainage like sand or pebbles, potting mix, and then terrarium plants. Now, if you have a great local garden center like I do, a lot of garden centers have a terrarium plant section. They're teeny tiny, you know, one inch pots of plants that are terrarium friendly, humidity friendly. If you don't, you're going to look for teeny tiny plants. Peperomia are great. Certain types of ivy are great. Let's see. I'm looking at a terrarium that I have in front of me. There are certain ficus that do really well. It also depends on the scale of your terrarium. Mosses are great in terrariums. Creepy crawling plants are great because they kind of crawl across the surface of the terrarium. The aluminum plant is great. I found a miniature pink polka dot begonia that I put in the gnome terrarium for my sister-in-law that was adorable, but you can give a little quick Google on terrarium plants. High humidity loving plants do well in terrariums because since they're under glass, they have obviously higher humidity, which is amazing. Nerve plants are another one that are so great for terrariums because gosh, they're so hard to keep alive, (laughs) not under glass. The tools you're going to need are some sort of like long tweezer. And then I make my terrarium tamper out of a fork and a wine cork. But basically, you need something to tamp the soil down because most of the vessels that you're planting, you're not going to be able to get your whole hand in the vessel. So a fork and a... (laughs) I'm giggling at myself. A fork and a wine cork will do. Just jam the fork into the wine cork and then you're able to kind of hold the fork and then put the bottom of the cork in to tamp the soil. So first, you're going to make your layer of drainage. So you're going to put your pebbles, your sand, and or your horticultural charcoal at the bottom. That's going to keep the terrarium fresh. Then you're going to put a thin layer of potting mix. 
Oh, before you do this plant up, I highly suggest taking the plants out of the pot and doing a trial run of how exactly you want to lay them out in the vessel so you can see in the vessel before you plant them up. Then you're going to take the plants out of the pots. You're going to shake the excess soil out. So you pretty much just have roots. And then you're going to nestle the plants in the soil in the terrarium. And then you're going to add more soil on top. And this is where you end up using your tamper. So basically you use your tamper to kind of tamp the soil down because obviously the soil has to be tamped down in order to stabilize the plant's roots and help the plant's be upright. I like having terrariums have some sort of like tall, medium, and low plant in them to have some sort of focal point. I'm looking at one that I have on my desk right now. There's a much larger peperomia and then a few shorter plants around it. Then I have a little bit of moss on one end. So it looks like the plants are crawling in and out of the moss. It's very beautiful. I went to the jewelry section of Michael's and I found beads that were little mini ceramic mushrooms. So I also was able to take my long tweezers and poke the mushrooms into the soil and plant friends. They look so cute. (laughs) I can't even stand it. How cute these little mushrooms look. After the mushroom mini series, I guess it makes sense that I'm so obsessed with mushrooms, I should make a mushroom themed terrarium. But anyway, I just think terrariums are such a fun opportunity to really hyper-personalize something. I want to make one for my sister and her husband who also just bought their house. I'm thinking about what I want to do for them. They have a Australian Bernadoodle that they're obsessed with named Birdie. I think I'm going to bring Birdie into it. But like the sky's the limit. You can make a terrarium in a mason jar. You can make a terrarium in a cookie jar. You can make a terrarium in a really elaborate terrarium bowl. And you can thrift them or you can go to your local craft store and they're going to have every variety of terrarium you can have. Like I was at Michael's the other day and they had 40 different types of terrarium vessels. It was incredible. But I just think it's the biggest effort of everything we've discussed, but I think it's also going to have the biggest impact. Do you know what I think would be an amazing accompaniment to any of these five crafts that we've discussed? The terrarium, the wreath, the kokodama, the cuttings, the herb garden is a copy of my book, Growing Joy, The Plant Lover's Guide to Cultivating Happiness. If you are gifting a planty gift to a friend, add my book with it. It'll help them learn how to care for the plants successfully, but it'll also help them use their plants that you're gifting them to live a happier life. Because if you don't know, I did write a book. It is named Growing Joy, and it's a self-help book all about how to use plants to grow more joy in your life. It is my love letter to plants. It is so highly personal. I wrote it when I was coming out of a pretty deep depression. So there's discussion about how I used plants to, you know, heal my depression, but also just like how I use plants to live a happier life on a daily basis, like having a terrarium on my desk as I record this episode for you. So anyway, get the book for yourself, for your friends, for everyone you know. (laughs) Please let me know on social media what of these projects you end up making. If you DM me a photo of them, I will put them on my social media and share with the world so we can celebrate you. I'm definitely on the terraria making bandwagon. I can't stop making them. I made three this week. (laughs) I'm really enjoying it. I'm also enjoying the mindful aspect of like making these mini worlds in a time in society that is like so hard to breathe and be alive. It feels really nice to escape into my little terrarium worlds filled with little tiny ceramic mushrooms. And I highly encourage you guys to do the same, especially during the holidays. It can get really stressful. And I hope that as you make these planty gifts for your friends and your loved ones and your family, you're also taking time to spend some time with yourself and some time with your plants. Use your plants to regulate your nervous system. You've got this. The holidays can be hard, (laughs) but I've got your back. I'll be making relaxing episodes for you every week. We're prepping for a relaunch of our YouTube channel um, soon. So make sure you're subscribed there. Follow me at Growing Joy with Maria for daily updates on what planty projects I'm doing in my house and for my friends. And until next time, my sweet plant friends, keep blooming and keep growing joy. Plant friend, thank you so much for tuning in today. If you like what you heard, make sure that you're subscribed to the show so you don't miss an episode. We have incredible episodes lined up in 2023, and I don't want you to miss one topic. And while you're subscribing, would you mind clicking over to the review section and leaving us a review? Reviews are tremendously helpful for the growth of the podcast, so I thank you in advance for helping this podcast reach as many planty earbuds as possible across the globe. 
If you're looking for more opportunities to grow as a plant parent with Growing Joy content, we've got a ton of free options for you. First, there's the Plant Parent Personality Test. It's so fun. It takes literally three minutes to complete. You take the test, you get your Plant Parent Personality Profile and a curated list of plants, projects, and podcast episodes that are right up your alley, tailored just for you, inspired by your results. The link is in the show notes. Make sure to let me know what your personality is after you take the test. If you're looking to uplevel your plant parent game, check out my website. We've got a bunch of free guides that you can download on topics like understanding natural light, which is actually a three-day worksheet, and nine ways to green up your office if you need to bring a little bit of planty joy into your work life. And finally, I want to invite you to join the plantiest and kindest corner of the internet, my online garden society. It's both a web platform and an iOS and Android app. It allows our listeners to get together in an algorithm and troll-free online space to swap plant care tips, humble brag about plant wins, and get support when you have plant fails. We have monthly live planty show and tells on Zoom, which are so fun, and even have a living library of planty book recommendations sourced from our community. You can go to jointhegardensociety.com to grab your membership. And for anything else, plant friend, I am here for you. Feel free to drop me a line, whether you have an idea for an episode, an event, or maybe you're even a planty business interested in sponsoring the show. And of course, following me on Instagram and TikTok for daily planty silliness, musings, and tips is always recommended. You can find me across socials at Growing Joy with Maria. Thank you again so much for listening. It is truly my honor and life's delight to help you keep blooming and keep growing joy. Plant care is self-care on Growing Joy, the podcast. Make new plant friends, propagate knowledge, and grow some freaking joy. That's the motto of the Growing Joy Garden Society app and platform, otherwise known as the plantiest and kindest corner of the internet. If you've been an OG listener or a longtime listener, you might also know this app and platform as the Bloom and Grow Garden Party, but with the rebrand, we've rebranded it to the Growing Joy Garden Society. No trolls allowed, kind plant friends only. And if you haven't heard about the society yet, Plant Friend, you got to join. It's my online community that you can access via iOS or Android app or on your computer that I built to connect our international community of plant friends so we can all nerd out together about plants and celebrate our passion for our beloved plant babies. We have members literally all over the world. I'm so in love with this community of sweet plant friends. I can't say enough amazing things about them. But also there's a lot of really cool features about the app you might be interested in. There's dedicated hashtags to all sorts of different subsects of planty passions like houseplants, gardening, plant-inspired DIY projects, growing joy, plants and pets, and so many more. There's a plantrepreneur group, so if you're a planty entrepreneur and you want to connect with other planty entrepreneurs, you can join that group to connect and network. There's a plant swap section, plus the entire app, and this is my favorite part, is entirely searchable. So say you want to learn more about Hoya, you type the word Hoya into the search bar, and literally every post ever created about Hoya will Will pop up so you can click in, see what other people have been posting about Hoya and learn on your own and crowdsource hair information. It's so cool. But last but not least, it's an amazing way to support the show. Your monthly membership not only goes to sustaining the platform, but it also supports my team of editors, writers, and a community manager that help the world of Bloom and Grow keep growing. So come join us. All you got to do is go to jointhegardensociety.com and sign up for the community plan. Once again, you go to jointhegardensociety.com and click Click the community plan. Hot take plant friends. There is no one right starter plant. There, I said it. And you know what? While I'm at it, there are also no real plant killers in the world. There are just people who have not figured out their right plants for their lifestyle. This is why I created the free Plant Parent Personality Test, because Plant Friend, I want you to get thriving alongside your houseplants as quickly as possible, so I made this cutie little Plant Parent Personality Quiz that's totally free for you on my website to take the guesswork out of building your plant collection effortlessly and joyfully. After speaking to thousands of members in our community, I realized that there are about five key plant parent personalities, each one with their unique set of strengths, weaknesses, and a unique set of plants that thrive under their care. For example, a mindful plant parent, someone who wants to engage with their plants daily, use them in their morning routines. If someone gifted that plant parent a succulent and they watered it every day, that succulent would die immediately. However... That drought-resistant succulent is a perfect match for a low-key plant parent, which is someone who 
travels, has kids, is busy, doesn't have time to engage with their plants every day. They're looking to engage with their plants more like once a week or once every couple of weeks. In addition, obviously, to understanding your light and basic plant care that we provide on this podcast, Happy Plant Parenthood is all about discovering your personality and then picking the right house plants to go with it. It's that simple. No more stressing over your collection. So what plant parent personality type are you, plant friend? All you got to do to find out is take my free quiz on my website and let me know. You can access it at growingjoywithmaria.com slash personality. After taking the test, you'll get an email with a list of plants, podcast episodes, and planty projects that I think would light you specifically up like a full spectrum grow light. So once again, that's growingjoywithmaria.com slash personality for your free plant parent personality test results. Mm-hmm. 